This is my 1977 F100 with a Ford 300 inline six, and these trucks came factory with a single barrel carburetor. But I went ahead and put a Fitech EFI system on it, and today I'm gonna give you the top reasons on why this was the best upgrade I could have made for this truck. This is the Fitech Mean Street 800 horsepower power adder unit. This thing has a lot of hidden features in the ECU that not a lot of people know about, and stick around till the end so I can go over all of those hidden features because we're gonna talk about it in one. First and foremost, it improve the reliability. With a carburetor, I was constantly chasing these little problems from clogged jets, to float adjustments, to vacuum leaks, which with EFI, you don't really have to worry about all those issues. Not only that, but it eliminated vapor lock issues, which is something you don't want to deal with in the summer heat while sitting in traffic. But with the EFI system we have on this thing, that issue is gone. Overall, that just improves the reliability. Reason number two, way better cold starts, especially on super cold mornings. On a cold morning, you gotta give carburetors a lot of love. You gotta pump the gas, feather the choke, sometimes it'd stall out, and you have to keep restarting it until it's warm. But with EFI, it runs just like a modern truck. You just turn the key, it fires right up, no matter if it's 20 degrees outside or 100 degrees outside. Heck, we drove this in the winter the last snow day with no problems. And that right there is worth it, especially if you plan on driving a truck as much as you can. Reason number three, this thing always has a consistent idle. One thing I noticed immediately once we got this thing dialed in was how smooth it actually does idle. With a carb, some days it was fine. Some days, you know, you'd have to make adjustments or it'd surge and die out. But with the EFI, it auto adjusts and keeps this thing dead steady. Plus with the adaptive learning feature in this Fitech unit, it's constantly fixing itself to run the best it can. So the more you drive it, the better it gets. It's almost like this system and the wideband O2 sensor knows this engine better than I do. Reason number four, better fuel economy. Now I didn't EFI swap this thing intending on saving on gas but it definitely has helped and we just did a video on how the miles per gallon has gone up this thing's super rich right now so we're going to redo that test right now it's at 24 miles to the gallon i think we can get more like 27 to 30 because my afr is like 13.3 right now so like that's super rich we could definitely lean it out a little bit more but all in all the fuel economy 24 miles to the gallon on a 77 f100 I'm happy. Reason number five, more responsive throttle and more power. This one you feel immediately, whether you're on the freeway or even on the low end, this thing does not stumble, has better fuel atomization, better throttle response, and overall, it just has more power at all ends. Reason number six, this is way less maintenance than you think. Once you get this thing set up and set up right, you don't really even have to touch it. And any adjustments you have to do is sitting there from your handheld unit, especially if you've got this thing on a full timing control system like we do on this little F100. So all the adjustments you need to make are sitting right there in your handheld unit located in the cab. And if this thing ever has an issue, it just sends the code right to the ECU and you don't need a scanner or nothing crazy like that. You just pull out your little handheld unit and it will tell you what's wrong with it right on the handheld unit. It was not raining when I started this. Now it's raining. So up to now, that's basically the reasons why I decided to go with EFI in the first place. But the rest of the reasons I'm getting ready to give you are why I specifically went with this Fitech system because this is a power adder unit. This unit was specifically built for adding power to motors. Like this thing was literally built for boost. So I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of key features on this thing. Stick with me till the end. First off, this thing is flex fuel compatible. You can put E85 in this thing, and which is something we're gonna do later down the road once we're ready for more horsepower. The only thing you gotta change out is it just depends on what fuel lines you have on it. Other than that, you don't have to do anything with the system. It can take E85 the way it sits. This thing has a built-in map sensor that right off the rip supports up to 20 pounds of boost but you can also run an external map sensor that will allow it to go up to 30 pounds of boost, which I highly doubt for this combination, I'll ever get to 30 pounds of boost, but, but 20 pounds of boost? Oh yeah, we're throwing 20 pounds of boost at it all day long, especially when we get some stuff done to the bottom end. This system has boost referencing for fuel control, so basically it can auto add fuel under boost if it needs it. As I kind of touched on earlier, this is a self-learning ECU. So basically the longer you drive it, the more it will adjust the tune and fix itself. So I think they basically say like after an hour worth of driving, like you're, you still haven't driven it long enough for it to learn. It's constantly learning and fixing itself. Another big reason, this thing has timing control. So basically I can pull timing under boost. I can customize where I want the timing at, at any given point, especially if you've got this thing 
on a full timing control system like we do on this Ford 300. For those of you who don't know what timing control is, basically the ECU is controlling the timing indefinitely, just like it would on any modern car. So let's say it's a super cold morning. I wanna bring the timing down a little bit so it starts a lot easier. You can do that. So the more boost you add, if I decide I need to pull more timing, I can do that from the handheld unit. As long as you've got everything hooked up correctly, you don't have to get out of the truck and adjust things unless for some reason you're changing the base timing. This thing has target AFR control. So basically I set the AFR to a certain point and the ECU maintains it, but check this out. So I'm gonna fire this thing up and I'm gonna adjust the AFRs while it's running to show you guys kind of what it looks like. The idle AFR is at 13.6 uh, right now. So we're gonna richen it up. Minimum value, 11.5. All right, we're gonna lean it out now. Did you hear that? I just sent it to the ECU. Let's go a little bit more. Let's like really lean it out so you can hear it more. This is 15 to one. Hear that? She's not happy. So we're gonna put it back where it likes it at 13.6. Uh, Now that's pretty cool. This thing actually has a data logger. For those of you who don't know what a data logger is, basically on this thing, all I do is hit a button and I can record for as long as I want how this thing's running. So like, let's say, you know, I'm driving down the road and I can't really look and monitor the AFRs and all that stuff while I'm driving because I'm driving. So I just hit a little button and it will record everything I'm doing from the AFRs to the RPM, the temperature, the timing, pretty much everything you would need to know and then you can go back, take a look at how it was running and make your adjustments once you get to a stationary position. Which by the way, you can tune this thing anywhere. I tune this thing at the gas station before I take drives. And a data logger is great when you're trying to optimize the performance of a motor because you can see in live time everything you need to know about this motor and it's just sitting there recorded. You just go back through, take a look, make your adjustments, try it again. This thing's got a built-in idle air control valve, so basically it can adjust and add more air to it. And you don't really even have to do all that much. The only time I really touch the air idle control valve is basically uh, there's a setting in the beginning that you can just like give it more air, give it less air, and you know, you just fine tune it from there. But for the most part, it auto adjusts so that that way it always is constantly optimizing how the motor's running. Another great thing about this Fitech is it's got altitude compensation. So basically, if I was driving this thing up a mountain, you know, the higher up in the air you get, the thinner the air gets, this thing will actually auto adjust for that altitude compensation and basically fix how the motor's running while you're running, which if this was still a carbureted setup and I was deciding to drive up a mountain, I would have to stop, tune it, keep going, stop, tune it, keep going, because it's constantly changing. If I decide to take this thing up Pike's Peak, I could just go the whole time, which I'll never do that because this thing's a clunker, but it's cool that I could. This Fitex got a built-in two-step rev limiter. So basically I can build up boost on the line when I decide to race this thing at the track and then leave on as much boost as I want, especially because this thing's a manual. All I got to do is just wire in the two-step and this thing's already got it built in. You're ready to go. Bop, 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 bang! Right off the line. I feel like a big reason people don't go EFI is because they don't completely understand it or they think it's too complicated. Wiring this thing in was like an ease. This little kit from Dorman Products actually made wiring this EFI system way simpler. Check this out. So the very nice thing about this wiring kit is it comes without those big bulky hardened plastic pieces and they're super small and petite and then it comes with this heat shrink your wiring connections look way better and dare i say professional i think the hardest part about this was i did have to drop the fuel tank to add a fuel return because now it recycles the fuel to constantly keep it cool which is why it eliminated the vapor lock issues but other than that i think there was a total of like five to eight wires you had to plug in and I wired in a CDI box with the timing control and an aftermarket coil. So that was a little more than what most people would do. And if you're running this system, definitely hook up the timing control because it's never going to run as efficiently as it could unless you hook up the timing control. But also has electronic fan control. It hooks right up to the ECU so I can set 
what temperature I want the fans to kick on at, and I can also set what temperature I want the fans to kick off at, which is really cool. So last but not least, the absolute biggest reason I decided to go with EFI and this specific EFI system is because of how simple this setup is and how safe it is to boost this thing with this specific Phytech system. It keeps the simplicity of a carburetor because it mounts up like a four barrel carburetor. You can run it like a blow through system, but you don't have to go through the headache of constantly maintaining a blow through system like you would a carburetor. Well, I got to stop. I got to tune it. I got to check the timing. I got to blah, 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 blah. And by the time I got done doing all the math on getting a good blow through system set up right, it actually exceeds the price of doing a Phytech system with the full timing control. So that was probably the biggest reason I decided to EFI swap my Ford 300 inline six. We are getting the turbo system on once stainless headers gets me the turbo header back because the wastegate was not added to it. I called them. They said, hey, we'll get it added to it. So if you guys have any questions about EFI swapping your classic vehicle, make sure to drop a comment down below. I will answer it or possibly make a whole nother video answering your guys' questions. This was the best upgrade I've made to the truck so far, and I'm super excited to get this thing turbocharged. But thank you guys for watching Hood Billy Garage. I'm Gilk the Great, and I'll see you next time.